Procedural terrain is pretty common these days in games. And it makes a lot of sense because you may have an infinite world that needs to be filled with visually interesting terrain. And although an artist may influence the algorithm, there's no way that they could create all that terrain by hand. And sometimes it's not even about scale, it's about variety. And in these cases, what you usually see is that an artist will make chunks of the terrain and then the algorithm will piece them together. So it seems like there's always this balance between letting the algorithm decide what the terrain looks like and creative control. And so in thinking about what the algorithm was going to be for my game, I wanted something that leaned heavily in favor of creative control. Something that somebody could pick up and play with immediately, but with some time, gain mastery over and create the landscapes in their head. And so the algorithm I ended up with was plate tectonics. So all the technical magic is made up of two things, cube maps and compute shaders. All of the environment data for the planet is stored in textures, and I'll use the height map to illustrate my point here. You can think of each pixel in this texture as the height of the terrain at that given spot. So then what we do is take six of these textures, wrap them up into a cube, and then we project that cube onto the surface of a sphere. Then we can extrude the sphere based on the values stored in the cube map. Now the great part about this is we can store any data that's spread across the entire planet in a cube map, such as the thickness of a given plate, or the water level, or temperature, humidity, you get the point. Now when we run our simulation, we're actually running it for every pixel in the cube map. But that's pretty hard to conceptualize in 3D, so let's break it down to 2D and see what happens when two plates overlap. So when we slide the orange plate under the green plate, the first thing you're going to notice is that it starts to shrink away, and that force we're calling subduction. Now how quickly that bottom plate subducts is relative to the thickness of the top plate. So if you have a really thick top plate, the bottom plate is going to subduct faster. The other force at play here is the one applied to the top plate to make it grow. And we're going to call that force inflation. Inflation is supposed to represent a transfer of mass from one plate to the other. And the way we calculate it is by having the top plate lerp towards the total thickness of both plates combined. And as we control that lerp speed, we control how much inflation is applied to the top plate. If we turn off subduction, you can see that there's nothing to keep inflation under control. So that top plate will keep growing until we hit a maximum thickness. You may also notice we're actually applying a dampening force as we approach that maximum thickness, so we slowly stop inflating. In addition to a maximum thickness, there's also a minimum thickness. So as a plate moves from being a bottom plate to a top plate, its thickness will slowly grow to that minimum thickness. Okay, so the big question is, how did it turn out? And let's take a look, I guess. What I'm going to do here is try to create just one giant Pangea. So uh, we're going to use this continent here in the middle as our big land mass. And then I'm just going to slide all the plates around it underneath it. And what's cool about this is we're going to get that big land mass like I'm looking for. But we're also going to get these tentacles and these little peninsulas that like shoot out from the center. So there's this balance between what I set out to create and what actually happened in the simulation. I will admit that it's pretty hard to sort of imagine exactly what you want and then create it using these tools. But what you do get is something that looks very natural and organic. And I think that's probably the most important thing. Every planet's going to end up looking very unique, and it should reflect the intention that the player had while they were creating it. As far as the different geographic features that the simulation's capable of, here you can see it does a pretty good job at doing mountains and valleys, and then things like peninsulas and coastlines are also really natural. Um, it's not that difficult to create things like islands or lakes or even inlets just by breaking up and shaping your continents differently. Um, and then we're also capable of creating things like large flat planes, like you can see here. All in all though, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think these tools give the player a lot of flexibility to create exactly what they want. Um, but the problem here, as you may have noticed, is we have a really good looking rock. Um, and that rock doesn't have any life on it at all. So 
All in, I'm like a year and a half into plate tectonics and I'm ready to move on. And the place I'm moving on to next is plants because we need to get some life on this planet. So if you like what you see and you want to try it yourself, you can go to EdenTheGame.com, download it, and then tell me what you think. Uh, otherwise, just enjoy the glamour shots.